on the ship that has been stranded in the Chesapeake Bay. Look, this is a live look right now at the Ever Forward. It's been here for a month. After two failed attempts to refloat the boat, salvage crews are now removing those huge cargo containers mm. from the ship in an effort just to get the ship out of the mud. News 4's Mark Seagraves has been covering this since it ran aground. He joins us live now from Downs Park with the latest. Mark, it's fascinating to watch that big crane in there to lift all of those containers off of that ship. Yeah, it really is an engineering feat what's going on. Take a look. You're looking at the starboard side right now from shore. It's a beautiful view from here. But now take a look from Chopper 4. That's the port side. And all the heavy wind that's been coming through has, has been slowing things down. That crane goes up 150 feet in the air to get those cargo containers. But that's the side where all the work is being done. This has been the scene at the Ever Forward since Saturday. This huge crane on a barge anchored off the port side of the ship, removing cargo containers one at a time. The containers are then placed on a barge and transported back to the port of Baltimore. The Ever Forward has been stuck since March 13th when it missed a turn in the shipping channel and ran aground. You can see how close she is to the shipping channel as this ship passes by. After two weeks of dredging and two failed attempts to pull the Ever Forward out of the mud, the plan now is to lighten her load. But offloading in open waters is risky. I think you got to weigh that against the potential of leaving that ship grounded for an extended period of time. The longer she sits on the bottom, the more likely damage to the hull will happen. I mean, it's just a matter of time. Sal McCargliano is a professor of maritime history and produces a YouTube show about the shipping industry. They're gonna start removing containers off the vessel, but they're gonna keep dredging. And what they need to do is get that vessel lighter. According to the Coast Guard, on Saturday, they were able to remove 22 containers. And yesterday, an additional 21 containers were lifted off. The Coast Guard says the goal is to get 500 containers off before trying to pull her out of the mud one more time. Yeah. Now, some new information I just got today from a shipping expert who's been monitoring the Ever Forward. Some of the big companies that have cargo on this ship, Bob's Furniture Warehouse, Samsung, Target, Home Depot, and Del Monte are some of the biggest companies with some of the biggest cargo containers on that ship. The plan now is to bring in a second crane that they will uh, anchor off the starboard side and continue to bring those cargo uh, containers off those ships. Each one weighs about 15,000 tons. Mm. They're going to get uh, thousands, about 15 tons each. They're going to get about 7,500 tons of cargo off and keep dredging. And they hope by April 18th, when the tide is at its highest this month, that they will be able to try again to pull her out of the mud. Wow. That's the scene here at Downs Park. Back to you guys. What a picture. So if you're waiting on a Samsung TV or some canned vegetables, be patient out there. Hey, Mark, <laughs> what can we learn from this incident with Ever Ford about shipping in our area in general? Yeah, Jim, that's a great question. You know, in the past several years, Baltimore has invested a lot of money in dredging out this particular Craig, the Craig Hill Channel right here, and putting new infrastructure, huge cranes in the port of Baltimore, so that huge Panex ships like this can come through here. And that's a great thing for a business, for shipping, and for the economy. But what we haven't invested in, and what we're finding out now, is the salvage equipment, right? The large salvage equipment in Europe and in Asia. They have these huge tugboats, these huge dredging devices that can do work so much quicker and faster. That's what we saw in the Suez Canal while they were able to get its sister ship out much faster because they had much bigger equipment. On the east coast of the United States, we don't have anything that compares to that. And so while we have the infrastructure to accommodate these huge ships, when we are now seeing more and more of these run -agrounds around the world that these bigger cargo containers are in use, what the east coast of the United States does not have are the salvage vessels necessary when something goes wrong. And we can't bring them in from from out of country because U.S. law dictates that all salvage ships that operate in U.S. waters have to be U.S. flagged. Back to you guys. All right, Mark Seagraves live on the scene with us again. Mark, thanks so much.